you know, you're all in my head. And welcome back to another 11 Rips. What am I doing here? What's going on here? Did you ever ask yourself that question? What's going on? You're a parallel of all the things that you liked while simultaneously trying to escape all the things that you didn't like. While simultaneously being a walking paradox. There's nothing I'd rather do more than save someone. And there's nothing I'd rather do more than kill someone sometimes. What an incredible program we're on. What a neat celestial dance around the sweet little rock we're able to do. And the only borders or limitations are within the mind? Wild. Let's light this up and smoke one and just kick it for a minute. Because you know there's no pressure with me. Why did I do these 11 rips? I guess I originally started them so I was less of a liability to Winnie's FaceTime on video with y'all but I mean now by association she's essentially fucked anyway if I <laughs> uh, I've been programmed to put myself down in a comedic way I think a lot of us have uh, but I've really been exploring that lately I've really been exploring what parts of my ego identity are serving me and some parts that others don't favor really are still serving me, so I keep them. And that's, that's part of my journey. But I'm going to light this up. Shout out to the homie Jen at Weed Me. She came through and hooked your boy up. We're going to smoke one of these Indicas. Hundo P that the uh, sativas give me anxiety. Most sativas do. Uh, I'm an Indica guy, so let's... Let's check out this Kush Quad situation. See how delicious it is. Yeah. But what's been on the mind? What's been on the soul? What's been on the heart? I feel like the essence of a rip should be a glorious rip roaring rant. But I was called to do one today to keep on track this incredible fundamental work I've been doing with I find it so cliche to say rebuilding yourself. We're rebuilding ourselves every day, making choices that mirror the choices of our habits and patterns from yesteryear. But every single moment, even the way you walk to work, even the way you walk to the corner store, the way you walk your dog, do you go the same route? Like we gotta check ourselves constantly that we're not just inventing the exact same experience over and over again. but we're going through it mindfully. Oh, that's the anchor. I've been making strong strides towards goals and, and visions of self and aligning with that and resonating with that and manifesting the things that are in my new timeline. And with that comes a hefty baggage check that you gotta say, oh fuck, that's not fitting on this ride. That, that part of your ego may have been cool going over here, but now you wanna go here and the density is lighter over this way? That's not gonna fit, homie. Bless you. You know, it's not gonna fit. You can't take it with you. So you gotta do everything. And there, it's not like winning an argument. You know what I mean? That's the root. It's it's going through the evolution with the mindfulness. So, usually, ever since a kid, we go through an experience, we react based on the information that we have, and we store these experiences in our knowledge, in our knowledge base. Not wisdom, not patience, in our knowledge base, what we think we know. And to go through life mindfully compartmentalizing experiences is exhausting. It's unhuman, <laughs> right? So you have to have these first-person experiences or else you wouldn't be the human 
It wouldn't be the human form consciousness is taking. But to go through these reparative measures where I say I'm reinventing, I am and I know what I will be wanting, desiring, moving towards, feeling, manifesting, however favorably I can clump those all together with the hope that I show myself a version of myself that I admire. Um, and it keeps raising and the bar keeps raising, but on the way to, 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 to reinventing the self, which is I, to reinventing the I, you have to face struggles of behaviors that aren't working for you with a mindfulness and a faith that says, I may not know the answer right now. And then, so where does that leave you and your confidence if you don't know what to do? It's not like with everyone else when you can pretend you know what to do. It's really inside. You don't know what other version of self to become. Like you can't visualize it. So, because you haven't made it yet, you haven't, you haven't created it yet. So not to get lost in semantics here, and just to get back to uh, the core root of what the fuck are we chasing? Why does everything, why does something have to change? Why? Is it causing you pain? So is the human life just basically about running away from pain? Fuck, seems not enough. Seems like we should cut the BS on trying to get somewhere and just be and serve from where we are and let that be the identity that proceeds your blessings, I guess. I mean, if we could learn that from a kid, if we could learn that earlier before we pitter-patter around in the footsteps of something else, we'd be so much more in alignment, I feel, so much more of the time, but that's definitely part of the human journey. You know what I'm sizzling? And you can always park parts of your identity for different periods of your life. You'll always have the same core flair, I think, I think that your spirit truly does have a like a DNA code of your little blurp of consciousness. And you probably come back in your reincarnations with like influence based on what energy pocket you're resonating in in the worldwide web of frequency across the universe, the universal wide quantum web. Um, you ever seen the quantum field? Shit is lit. It's like mycelium everywhere, in every direction. Like constantly going into its energy all around you. I saw it on ecstasy. This is nice. The indica is better. I'm tasting a touch of mints. I'm tasting a bit of what I get from the mints on this. And that's nice. Probably just like a mint kush or something. Uh, what else do I got? What else do I got in the chamber? I love doing music so much. I'm so glad. I found music late, you know that? I didn't find it late. I started to pursue it late compared to people who are in the same class of musician as me now, like most people start it early. Whereas I started performing early, it was acting first. But man, people in film knew I was special, but people in music could identify it quicker. Yeah, that's, that's not even on some big headed shit. Like, 
before I was good. People in music, I think there's probably just more producers could like identify it quicker. You know, so it really helps when you feel invited in to do something. Contributing matters. Context matters. What you're doing with your skills or your your natural talents in your life, that matters. It matters how you feel about yourself. It matters. It doesn't matter who's watching, but it matters how you feel your work is moving or or who it's affecting. I mean, you could be given purpose through your craft. And lots of times that's the only way a human can find purpose. <laughs> if you ask me, that's an interesting can you find purpose without a craft? I guess so. I guess moms find a, find a purpose. That's not healthy, though. But I don't, I mean, I haven't birthed a child, so I don't really have legs to stand on in that combo. But in terms of what it would take to tear yourself away from that type of behavior, you know? But, um, yeah, like, like your purpose for your soul just to be? Is that, a, is that a worthy purpose? I don't know if that's enough for me. I feel like as an artist, you got to go through some torture and express the trauma or something. Which, P.S. Guys, fuck. I don't, I don't even know what I should or shouldn't be saying. Winnie's at a great point like this, too. And I'm getting there slowly. Yeah, I don't know. That's such a nice place to be. I don't know. So I'm just gonna do what I feel, step by step, and I'm just gonna stick to the simple points that I know are real. Um, I've been working with this great life business spirit coach named Alicia Rep. she's incredible. And we kind of took inventory of my life and career and, and goals, essentially, if you will, or self-envisionment. And, um, it's so great I'm doing these practices after writing a book. I read a bunch, experienced a bunch, wrote a book, and then I'm doing these like very like tuned in practices and you'll get to see my next book will be influenced by like this awareness. So that'll be really cool. So I wrote this album because me and Alicia landed on, I must, I must share what caused this. I must tell you, I must tell you um, yeah, of the hurt and stuff and the fear. And, uh, and when does that all take place so often in a human's life? High school. High school. So like, the album's essentially called High School. And it starts in grade eight, which is when I grew up, where I grew up. It was like grade eight. Doesn't matter if you're 411 and 12 years old, you're going to this fucking horny jail. <laughs> Fuck. There were 16 year old kids with acne. There, there was like growing men who were fighting <laughs> in this school when I was like a preteen and I got in. And that, that, would, that was the easy side, believe me. You'll hear on the album how it all kind of went down and how I learned to be a very outside the box thinker and why and um, yeah, especially for any fans or friends or you know people in the community who may struggle with some of my rebelliousness. I think a lot of people want me in their community or group or, or want to uh, kind of subscribe to the 11 vibe but but a lot of my rebelliousness, I think, scares or pushes a certain number of folks away, and that's okay. Like I think, like I'm not scared of that nature either. Like I'm not, uh, I'm not disappointed to play that type of role in someone's life, wherever they need to position me, like as a villain or closer to the side of antagonist, rather. Even if I started as a protagonist, so it's all kind of just like the beautiful dynamic journey of life. So I thank you for even having me in your mental vortex if you've thought about me at all. So bless you. And I know people on both sides of influencing me and me influencing people, uh, 
you know, you're all in my head. <laughs> so that's great. That's a beautiful point of honesty. But, um, you know, uh, my rebelliousness comes from a very pure place of survival. So I think a lot of our personality is um, is harbored by the the nature that we that we that we were already anyway, or that we were, you know, nurture versus nature. I guess the capacity of the circumstance, how you grew up, definitely demanded something of you. And whether you had it or didn't have it, you compensated or delivered. Period. That's just by design the human dance, which is great. Which is really great that we're, we're essentially indestructible. <laughs> we're infinite. And the lifetimes go woo, woo, woo. And like this whole thing that seems like one huge life, you're going to learn so many textures and having so many beautiful real experiences and vivid moments of reality at least that seem real to you or I uh, and it's all contributing data back to the whole to the whole consciousness everything that is experienced uh, is you know being felt and sucked up by the Tao and held in the Akashic records you know all that stuff I mean, basically, the quantum field is 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 giving you what you ask for with your thoughts in tandem with your actions all day long, your emotions and your thoughts. How you? What did you think about? How are you feeling? <laughs> That's the backwards equation to what you've been manifesting. You know what I'm sizzling? So it's pretty simple. Like it's not like it's not really like fuck withable, you know? Like the simple equation shit that I just point to and it's not even it that it's not that complex either. Like this reality so very blatantly is what it is because we thought about it. You think the fuel of this dimension is thought. Can you turn that down for just a sec, Wynn? Thanks so much. Just making some content. I'll be done in two secs. I'm sick. I'm just gonna wrap up. I know, but just like this is staying in. I don't care. I'm sick of Love you. Uh, so we move in. I just wanted to have some clean audio for you guys, and see my reaction to explain myself. As though you just listened to me talk about great stuff for nine minutes, and then we're gonna change your opinion on me because that. Why should I even explain myself? You were here. <laughs> That's so trippy. So that, what I just did, is what's super new for me and exciting. It's like I'm no longer a victim of my being in it. I'm looking at me in it while it's happening. <sighs> it's too present. It's so mindful. It's too mindful. It's almost like a, it's like I can't play the human. <laughs> it's like I can't play the human game. That's why funny people are often more intelligent because they're like checked out of the actual reality, done from reacting, making fun of it. Just. Also, it's like a survival mechanism too, and we get you know really good at storing that emotion and that oh, it's not a big deal. But here's the truth: this is fine that things make you feel ways, and you choose in the moment to let them go or hold on to them, depending on how big they are, right? Depending on how much priority in your life it matters to you, right? If someone missed grabbing a coffee with you on a day where you already had other shit to do, that's not gonna mean as much to you. It's not going to engage such a reaction as if that person missed your wedding day, your graduation, I don't, I don't know what that's like, but you know, your graduation day. 
you know what like we attach symbols to specific events and expectations and then we go well <laughs> if that person doesn't respect this symbol like i do then uh fuck them <laughs> and then and then we make them like sworn enemies do you know how many people i have cut out of my life it is exhausting and hilarious when someone tells me they're cutting someone out of their life. When someone says, I cut him off, oh my God. What does that mean? Of course you can cut people off, just don't text them. Of course. But dude, I have like punished people with the, my absence. You know, I've taken my power back by being missed. You know, I get that, I get that. But like, you don't have to make an announcement out of it. And you don't owe anyone explanation. You're so dramatic. Oh my God. There's a fly on uh, the power cord. It's like a branch to him. It's like a branch to us, keeping us connected through these lightning bolt plugins, through these audio devices these computing electronics showing you me and showing me you sometimes a lot of you from a lot of you do what you gotta do Kaladi in a motel room I'm done this joint this was a fun rips I really went places. I, did, I don't know. I, I don't know what I was expecting. I was told by God to do this. And now it feels full and complete. So I'm going to go. But I love you guys. And I will see you soon.